I fear no man. But that thing... It scares me. Okay, that was a slight exaggeration because the default archive utility tool on your Mac does a good job 80% of the time. But recently, I tried to download a firmware update from Sony, one of the largest companies in the world. And when I tried to extract the zip file, I ran into this error. And that's why it's always smart to have free file archive apps like the Unarchiver or Kekka as backup for the remaining 20% of the time. Hi friends, welcome back to part two of the Mac app series. If you're new here, my name is Jeff. Come for the best Mac apps for file and media management and stay, as per usual, for the memes. Diving right into app number two, Ina Video Player. Ina, like VLC Media Player, is free and open source, but unlike VLC, it actually looks like an app developed for the 21st century. For example, fast forwarding with a trackpad is buttery smooth, whereas VLC is a little bit laggy. Uh, you have picture in picture mode for multitasking. You can access the playlist panel in one click and the settings here is super intuitive for the everyday user. You can change the aspect ratios, the speed of the video, turn on and off subtitles in one click, and you can even change the color of the subtitles to your liking. As usual, it's the small things that matter. So under preferences, I like to keep the initial volume at 100 and maximum volume at 250. Don't ask me why. And under general, I love how you can enable quit the application after all windows are closed. To be fair, I've used VLC for a good five to six years. They have a lot of the same features and settings, but they're just so hard to get to. You have to like dig around the menu bar like this. And as you all know, with my very easygoing personality, very easy to personality. I hate loose ends, so I have to always command Q to quit the app again after closing that last video file. Useful media app for the Mac number three, System Color Picker. This is a free app you can download from the App Store and it looks something like this. Even if you're not in the creative or design fields, this color dropper tool right here is amazing for school and for work. Let's say you're creating a presentation and you wanna use a color you found online. You can press Command P to bring up the color dropper tool, select the red, and now you see the hex code pop up immediately here and and what's more, this has already been copied to your clipboard so you can paste and use it immediately. Now, to do that, you have to go into preferences under general tab, show in menu bar instead of dock, under color, uppercase hex color, prefix hex color with the pound sign. I uncheck HSL and LCH because I don't know what they are. Can someone please teach me in the comments? Uh, advanced. Uh, copy color in preferred format. This copies it to the clipboard automatically. And under shortcuts, pick color is already by default command P. So you don't have to, you don't have to do anything there. And toggle window, I have command O. So you can toggle the window like this. Pro tip, if you watch part one of this series, you probably already installed the free and open source Mackie app as your clipboard manager. So let's say you pick multiple colors. You can see that all the hex codes and corresponding colors are now conveniently stored in one place. Pro tip number two, and I bet most of you didn't know this. If you did, let me know in comments. I don't believe you. But if you find a color that you like, you can literally drag that color into your color palette. And this syncs across all your design related Mac applications like Final Cut Pro. And if you want to get rid of this color, you literally have to drag the color into the trash can. That's literally the only way to remove a color on Mac. Mac organizational app number four, Bartender. This is how I keep my top menu bar here super clean. Bartender is a paid app, but two great alternatives are Dozer and Hidden Bar. Both free, both open source. I'll link them down below. Jumping right into the preferences under menu bar layout, you can see I keep a Wi-Fi, clean shot I'm using right now, and drop zone apps always visible because I need to interact with them. If you don't know what these are, check out part one of these series. And everything else is hidden unless I click on the menu bar. Now, what I find super useful is the show for updates tab. Basically, you can set a rule where if a condition is triggered, that app icon will appear briefly in the menu bar before being hidden again. For example, WeChat is a messaging app and when I'm working, I don't wanna be constantly distracted by the number of unread messages, right? But I also want to know when my colleague texts me. So for WeChat here under edit, I have a set that it shows when item has a change, when a message comes in. 
it shows for five seconds. So I see a message has come in and then it disappears again uh, and I can focus on my work. I have a superpower where I actually don't feel the need to respond to every message. Honestly, it's because I hate texting. <laughs> Media and file management app number five is a free and open source PDF reader called Skim. Now I have to admit, Mac's built-in preview app is already pretty useful for PDFs. You can highlight, you can annotate, you can even insert signatures that you've created like this. Skim, on the other hand, is designed specifically for reading and note-taking. As you can see, a very clean interface, uh, pages and chapters on the left, notes you've taken on the right, you can type in the page number, let's say 200, to jump directly to that page. And I can type, uh, press Command Shift N, Command Shift T to focus just on the text. Under PDF, PDF display, I like to select horizontal continuous. This allows me to scroll from like left to right. It's just more natural for me. And I always make sure to use current view settings as default so I don't have to make those changes every time. I can use the highlight tool to highlight a specific passage, use the note tool to add a note directly, move this around, command shift N to bring up all the notes I've hi and highlights I've made and double clicking allows me to jump to that page directly. That's basically how I use this app. But if you're a student, professor, and or PhD candidate who takes lots of notes, what's great about Skim is that when you export, you can choose to export this as a PDF file with embedded notes. So others can see your highlights and notes when they open the file. Alternatively, you can export just your notes as a skim notes file. So everything you've written can be saved and backed up. App number six is a quickie, Flicklow. If you've seen these types of photos on Instagram and wonder how to get flip clock screensavers, you can download this completely for free for desktop and under your screensaver options, you can change the scale to your liking and enable this on multiple displays. File slash media management app number seven, Downy. Super intuitive to use. You just copy the URL of any video you find online. I mainly use this for YouTube and paste it into this interface. And after a bit, it'll even prompt you to download any subtitles it has found as well. An advanced use case is within the app, you can press command E to bring up something called user guided extraction, paste in a website into the address bar here. And after a little bit, all the media available for download will be shown videos in this tab and images available for download in this tab. Obviously be ethical, do the right thing, do not abuse these features. A free alternative I found to Downy is something called a neat download manager. And although it doesn't look as fancy or as polished, it does a great job for an app that is completely free to use. Mac file management app number eight, Google Drive for desktop. I've made an entire video on how to get this up and running, so I won't go into detail here, but the main gist is if you use the Google suite of tools for work or for school, it's super convenient to be able to access your Google Drive files directly in Finder and the ability to make folders or documents available offline anytime you want is game changing. Number nine is an app that comes in all Macs, but I'm willing to bet most of you have never even opened it. And that is Automator. If you open up Automator, um, file new, you will see this seemingly complicated menu, but don't worry. I'm going to show you a very practical use case where downloaded documents are automatically moved to specific folders based on a rule that you create. To start off, select folder action, choose, and under choose folder, other, select your downloads folder. We're going to use a downloads folder for this example. And the search bar here, type in filter finder items drag it over like so. Um, you're going to pick file extension here, contains PDF, and then back in the search bar, type in move finder items, drag it down below like so. Then you're going to choose a destination folder where you want the PDF files to go to. I've already created one ahead of time. So I'm just going to pick mine, documents, local documents, download PDF files and click choose. You can now press command S to save this folder action. I'll name my move uh, downloaded PDFs. Click save and now go online and download a PDF file into your downloads folder. And hopefully if we've done everything correctly, yes, 
the PDF was downloaded and moved to that destination folder. If you want to delete or edit a folder action, you have to go to library, workflows, applications, and folder actions. And you can see that here. If you don't see library in your sidebar, it means you didn't watch my top 10 productivity tips for the Mac video, but it's okay. I forgive you. Uh, you just have to go to go, uh, hold down option and library appears. This is just one example of what Automator can do. So I'd love to hear some of your best workflows and use cases. I've also heard about the Hazel app, which is like this on steroids apparently, uh, but Hazel is paid and Automator is free to use. So any Hazel users, let me know if it's worth it and what you use it for. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out part one where I go through the best Mac apps I use for productivity. See you on the next video. In the meantime, have a great one.